bit more now from Laura Tolchin, risk management consultant to companies on environmental issues. Laura, thanks for your time tonight. Um, let's, uh, you heard our first guest there. Uh, any response to what he thinks about how this is going to increase costs? You're dealing with this every day with businesses. Absolutely. Good evening, Joe, and happy Earth Day. Um, you know, as you mentioned and, and you showed some significant stats, you know, I think it is fair to say that the private sector has been leading this charge against climate change for the past few years um, as the government has taken a back seat, at least here in the United States. We've seen significant pledges by major companies in this area, you know, Uber, FedEx. GM, Volvo, it's no longer just the Teslas or the niche disruptors in this space choosing to take real action against climate change. You know, I think it's fair to say that the disruption has already happened and we are moving from a private sector standpoint towards fighting against climate change and managing climate risk. What are the challenges for businesses uh, in, in doing this and financially, I guess, primarily? Well, absolutely. I mean, many of the companies that, that we work with are understanding climate risk sort of within the holistic environmental, social and governance or ESG framework. You know, there are many challenges in really identifying where climate risk lands, um, how to quantify it and how to manage it within a framework that's also looking at things like, as you mentioned, job creation and good governance practices. Mm -hmm. Some of these things are frankly trade-offs and finding a, a clear, consistent way to measure those things can be quite difficult. What do you think will be the biggest, uh, most visible change that will be obvious if this thing proceeds as planned or gets even close over the next nine years? What's something tangible we can look at and say, wow, look at this? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely going to be these major investments in electric vehicles, in our infrastructure that can support renewable energy at a scale unlike anything we've seen. I mean, as you said, Joe, yourself, the, the you know, nine years, we're talking about a very soon target, mm -hmm. which is, I think, what's so, you know, very ambitious about Biden's statement today. We're not talking 2050. We're not talking 2060 as China has. We're talking sort of in the graspable future, which is going to require real action soon um, and also really highlights the urgency of this matter. We don't have till 2050. We don't have till 2060 to fight climate change. This is today. So is it more electric cars? Is it more wind turbines? What are we going to see and notice the difference? I think it's you know, it is all of those things. It's our national grid from an electricity perspective. It is transportation. That is absolutely going to be a huge investment. Electric vehicles, public transportation. I think, you know, there is the, the potential here to really change the way we, we live our lives and consume energy um, in the very short near term. Laura Tulchin, Director of Environmental, Social and Governance Issues at Exeger. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Joe. As Missouri